Okay, so we just saw the new Christopher Nolan film, Dunkirk. Um, I I was very upset with this. No fight broke out. Oh, it's terrible. I paid to see a fight. I was waiting for gunshots to start ringing out. None of that ever happened. I, I was hoping, because like, like, I was hoping somebody would like, you know what, I'm going to one-up those assholes from the, from the theater last week and somebody just bring a grenade in. Yeah, they like didn't start shooting anything. No, nobody even yelled Bastards. at anybody. Bastards. It was all old, old people. Yeah, a bunch of old fuckers. Seriously, I mean, there was a couple of younger, like, kids, like, like, like his age and stuff like that. But as far as the adults go, we were probably the youngest people in that in that theater. Yeah. There's a, a surprisingly low number of people in that theater. I was kind of shocked. I was shocked. I was expecting there to be at least, you know, 20 people. And there wasn't even that. No, there was probably maybe, maybe like, 15 at most. I mean, a couple people came in towards the end of the, cra the um, trailers, but... Yeah, not a lot of people saw this, which is the last two movies we went to where a lot of people showed yeah, up. Yeah, they were pretty packed. We're trying the Fruit Loop milkshakes this time from Burger yeah. King. Yeah, it's pretty delicious. <laughs> it's good. It's not as good as Lucky Charms one, but it's still pretty good. I like it. I do too. This one's a lot thicker. And the milkshake itself doesn't taste as good, but the chunks of the cereal taste better than the, the Lucky Charms one did. Yeah. So... Dunkirk. I mean, there's you can't really give any spoilers. Eventually, the Germans lose. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, <clears throat> piece of cereal got stuck in my throat. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna choke on a milkshake and die? <laughs> Damn Germans! <laughs> At least I make the news again. <laughs> so um. Yeah, I know you uh, didn't like this one as quite as much as I did. I I, no, I, I liked it a lot. Um, I didn't think it was you know spectacular. There was there was some good uh, you know scenes in it, but overall it was just kind of meh to me. Anyways, I didn't I didn't think it was spectacular. It wasn't as far as war films go. It wasn't as good as like say Saving Private Ryan. It wasn't as good as Hacksaw Ridge. But the the parts where they were being attacked, because I mean, yeah. you have a computer, you know, you can look up the Dunkirk story and find out everything that happened. This this movie's pretty accurate. I mean, of course, we don't know what they said to each other, but that was you know. that was tense when they were you know shooting them down on the pier and shit like that. The way that was filmed was so realistic. I mean, when these bombs were coming in, the theater got so loud. It made you feel like you were there. I mean, when those bullets were flying in, I mean, like they were flying directly in front of the camera. And, yeah, that was cool when the, the when the flame, planes were swooping down. That I wasn't expecting it to get that loud. It was like one thing I'll give to this film: it did not fuck around. This movie got right to the point. It didn't try to. Th I give it this plus. It didn't try to throw in any unnecessary subplot. Didn't. I mean, there was kind of one with the, the, the guy on the boat with his family, with his with his two sons. But it was <laughs> it was so. <laughs> Small a, a portion. Yeah. That's. I mean, them being in the film was a big point. Their subplot as a family was so undertone that I, I didn't mind it. And yeah, it, it didn't take away from the movie at all. Yeah, we didn't get bogged down by them trying to make it over dramatic. I mean, this was a yeah. terrible incident that actually occurred. You know, you don't have to to, to manufacture the drama. And the acting, I thought, was I didn't really understand good. why why they got uh, Tom Hardy to even play in this movie because he really didn't bring anything to it. No, he didn't. Like, <laughs> he wasn't bad. He wasn't bad. No, he wasn't bad, but like any anybody could have played that <laughs> part. It would have been just the same. But I, we, were, we were just talking. <laughs> when he has the, air, the mask over his face and he's in the airplane, he sounds like Bane. Like, Are you talking like this a little bit? I was waiting for him to go, your move, Batman. <laughs> yeah, he totally did sound like Bane. <laughs> Yeah, that would have been awesome. Yeah. Just throw some Batman lines in there. <laughs> uh, the, the movie overall, I mean, like I said, the acting was all really good. The directing, the way this film is pieced together, it I could see how somebody get, could get confused. Even though they kind of spell it out for you in the beginning, I could see somebody not understanding that. Like, yeah. the truth is the, the movie, that's three separate storylines. One takes place over the course of the hour leading up to the event of when they were rescued. One takes place starting the day 
like the whole day before they're rescued and one is the whole week that they're there. And yeah. We're being told all these stories at the same time, but we're not being shown them chronologically and eventually they all meld together. Yeah. And that wasn't too bad. You I, know, you got the, the pier story, the airplane story and the little boat story. Mm -hmm. And they blended together so well. I mean, any other director would have, would have messed that up. Oh, no, yeah, that, that would have been so screwed up. You would have never knew what was going on. But even like Christopher Nolan, if you, if you could pick a worse Christopher Nolan film, it's still a well-made film. I, I, I don't think... I like Memento, but I don't think it's as great as everybody says it is. But it's still good. And it was like only his second film that he made. Yeah. But I, I love Interstellar. Yeah, Interstellar is awesome. Inception's great movie. Yeah. This is both much better than this movie. <laughs> oh, yeah, I agree with that. Um, I wouldn't call it a bad movie. It's just, if you're going in thinking uh, it's like any other war movie with lots of, you know, shooting and killing and all that, it's really not. Like, yeah, they people get mowed down, but there's no, like, there's no battles because it's it's basically one-sided. They're flying in with their planes and just murdering people. There's German dive bombers just, just coming in, just diving down, bombing the shit. And I tell you what, Kenneth Branagh, in my opinion, deserves an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor because his physical acting, when he would look in the sky and just the way his face would change when he'd see, like, oh, fuck, here comes another plane. Yeah. Really good. I mean, oh, shit, there's another one. And, well, like I said, I, I did like the film, I think, more than you did, but I, I will say that this probably won't go in my top ten films of the year, but I really hope that Christopher Nolan is nominated for Best Directing, because as far as directing is concerned, for the filmmaking, the cinematography is stunning. Yeah, I agree with that. It was uh, the airplane scenes were awesome you know there's some flying around that was very well shot very well done and I tell you Hollywood needs to take a look at this you can make an epic war film that's impactful and in the end I mean you kind of get emotional because well, I won't get, spoil the end but there's some stuff that happens at the end it kind of chokes you up a little bit because you kind of are invested in these characters now yeah and um, it was only an hour and 45 minutes long yeah I mean, it doesn't have to be three hours. No. Now, I enjoy my long... Like, I love the movie Gettysburg. That's over four hours long. And I've seen that movie a couple times. That's one of my favorite movies ever made, but not every movie has to do that. No. And that's the why Christopher Nolan is a good director. He just pulled no punches. We're going to just tell this story as it happened. We're not going to manufacture drama. We're just going to... This is what happened. Here's how they got out, and I liked in the end when they thought that they were going to come back home and be called cowards. Like, oh, we had to, we had to escape, we had to evacuate, and that wasn't the case at all. Like the no, people were, embraced them. They were welcome. They were giving them beers and apples and shit. Like, yeah, yeah cheering for them. That was that nice. Was cool. Um, how how historically accurate do you think it was? Was it pretty spot on? It was really spot on. I mean, it, it was really historically accurate. There's a couple things. I mean, I could nitpick the movie, but you, you have to add something. You have to make it, it. It has to be a story that can be told on screen. Yeah. So you have to add some things and take some things away. So there's little this and that. But for the most part, I mean, this is kind of how it happened. Like I said, we don't know all the conversations. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like to joke and be like, well, they're all dead now. Actually, no. A guy who was there, the guy that's like in his 90s, recently reviewed the movie talking about how good he thought it was. Yeah. So, um, I, I, it's definitely worth, I mean, on this, I was kind of would have preferred this to see this on the bigger screen. Because when, when the airplanes are coming in and you see those wide angle shots of the ocean. Yeah. And they're coming, that and on the big screen would have been amazing. That would have been pretty cool. But this is only showing on the smaller screen, but it was well, we got free tickets because of what happened last week. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys for fighting in our movie theater because we got to see this movie for free. Yeah, somebody show up and fight next week so we get more free tickets. Yeah, next week's Atomic Blonde. Come and start a fight with somebody so the next week we can all see Dark Tower for free. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. I can't wait for Atomic Blonde. I know, that looks so good. I, that's, that's, <laughs> since, uh, I would say probably... Uh, Wonder Woman. It's the movie I've looked forward to the most seeing. Like, I love Spider-Man. I thought it was a great movie, but I want, I want, I'm looking more forward to seeing Atomic Blonde. Yeah. That's something new and different. Yeah, and they're like, the, I hate this so much. It's, I mean, th this is sexism. They're like, the next, or the first female 007. Why, why can't she just be the first Charlize Theron? I mean, the first Atomic Blonde. Why does she have to be compared? It's not like James Bond at all. 
Yeah, James Bond will, will mess people up and not kill them. No, she murders everybody. Yeah. So I hate it's that nothing comparison. Nothing like that at all. You know, it's like there's when, been other spies that are girls. Yeah, the movie Salt. I'm not a big Angelina Jolie fan, but that movie's pretty good. Yeah. She played when she's not playing the seductive, "Ooh, look how hot I am, woman," and she's playing a serious, dramatic character, kind of like in the movie uh, Life as We Know It. I think or. or Life or something like it. That was an yeah. movie. When she plays in those kind of movies, she's really good. She actually is a good dramatic actress. Yeah. Um. So, um, yeah, and she was really good in Salt as a as a female spy. And um, but I'm Atomic Blonde's got Charlize Theron and my favorite current working actor James McAvoy. So yeah, that'll be really good. Mm -hmm. He was on Colbert the other day, and he came out shaved completely bald and. We're like, why is he bald? I'm like, well, he's shooting the sequel to Split and the next X-Men film. Why not just stay bald? Yeah, you're you're going to have to be bald yeah, for both those movies. Be bald. Just get used to it for a while. <laughs> why bother growing your hair back? You're going to uh, Professor X at this point is bald. And, yeah. You know, in Split, the dude it was bald. Yeah. So that only makes sense. I'm looking forward to the sequel to Split. I think James it's going to be called McElroy just Glass. Is, is gotten to be a really good actor. Yes, he has. I have an early horror film he did when he was only like 20 years old called The Pool. It was filmed in Scotland. Oh, yeah? It's it's actually pretty good for a low budget. I I actually like most horror films I've seen coming out of Scotland. Scotland makes great horror films. And uh, it's it's not great, but for a, as low of a budget as it had. And he, he's really good in it. But um, I still say his performance a, a, as Victor Frankenstein is one of the most underrated performances in the history of film. Yeah, that was really good. Mm hmm yeah. So, um, trailers, we got this, this the same Murder on the Orient Express. That just looks great. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed in the background, like, I didn't notice the last time in the trailer, the girl who plays Rey in Star Wars is in that movie. She was in the, on the train. Daisy Ridley. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I saw her name in the credits. Oh, you didn't? I didn't pay attention yeah. to that. Yeah, I saw her. I was like, wait, that's, that's Rey from Star Wars. Awesome. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> There's so many good people in that movie, and it's a great story anyway. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Yeah, that looks really good. Um... What else do we get? We got uh, Justice League. It's the same Justice, Justice League trailer, League, but we yeah. haven't got that trailer in like a month, so it was cool to see it again. Yeah, that one looked really good. I can't wait to see that. Yeah, I, actually, you know what? I think they added a little bit more Wonder Woman to the trailer. Yeah, he probably did. Yeah, because they're like, well, <laughs> yeah, people want to see her. There's a rumor that Ben Affleck, after Justice League, is not. That's going to be it. He's not going to play. He might be out as Batman. Oh yeah, well, that's has, too bad. He's not a bad Batman. No, even in, like. Batman vs. Superman, a lot of people hated that movie, and I get why. I thought he was really good as old, grisly Batman. Yeah. Maybe they want to go back to younger Batman again. Or somebody else to be the Batman. Yeah. Introduce us to Dick Grayson, make him Batman, that'd be great. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, and then we got another, like, kind of horror film trailer. It's called, like, Snowmen or something like that. Yeah. That looked okay. The Something about Snowman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That one didn't look too bad. <laughs> yeah, it's funny stuff in it. I want to see a snowman murder people. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever seen Jack Frost? <laughs> With the snowman that kills people? Yeah. Uh, I own that. That's a good movie. We got that for a dollar used, and Amy never seen it. She the whole time she's just like, this. like "This is great! It's, it's the absolute worst looking effect in a film ever." And he's killing people. Yeah, he's just killing the crap he, out of people. He's a snowman at any time. You can just throw coffee on him. I mean, <laughs> yeah, he goes inside. People have. I mean, this is in a, like in, in a town that's like used to snow. They all have air conditioning or fire or, or heating and fireplaces. Yeah. If he goes anywhere, he'll die. <laughs> but he totally doesn't. There's a sequel to it. I've never seen it. All you'd have to do is like tackle him. He buzzed into a million pieces. He's a snowman. <laughs> that's that's one of those movies that was so aware of what it was doing. Now, like they know, like somebody came up with the idea while they were drunk and pitched it to the studio and woke up the next day and they're like, dude, this, the studio totally greenlit this. Those guys accept that. I was <laughs> just talking out of my ass. I'm so drunk. Mm -hmm. Now we gotta make a movie about a stupid snowman. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> well, I'll have the script tomorrow. This won't be hard. <laughs> snowman murders people. Mm -hmm. People run away. Snowman catches them, murders them more. There you go. That's the whole movie. Yeah. <laughs> but nothing will beat Santa's sleigh. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty good. That was one of the first film reviews I did was 
reviewing that. Bill Goldberg or Santa Claus? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's so just good. the best Santa Claus. <laughs> I'm here to bring you Yuletide fear. Uh, and he killed Fran Drescher, which that automatically gave it th- yeah. two thumbs up for me. <laughs> so, um, I, yeah, there's really not much more to talk about. I mean, it, it's a it's a war film about something that really happened. There's really no spoil. I'm not going to spoil what happens to the characters, but the incident, everybody knows. I mean, yeah. they, they save about about. 75 to 80 percent of the people and the people yeah. who I'd say the death scenes in this I think were equivalent to like saving private Ryan some of those were uncomfortable oh yeah when those guys were going down the boats and shit oh that oh, was that shit was it definitely was like oh man the, the scene where the kid was trying to hold the thing over his head and the person right next to him exploded and the guy went up in the air in the dirt and, and you know there was yeah. blood and stuff and that dirt fell down on him he had to just lay there and just wait yeah. and hope they didn't see him yeah, that was gruesome. Yeah, this like I said, this movie didn't fuck around, and I, that's why I think I liked it a lot. Is it just pulling? It just hey, here's what this is. Yeah. So. Yeah, it was cool. I think we both still recommend it, but I would probably give it a small, slightly higher grade than you do. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'll probably give it like four deaths out of nine. <laughs> <laughs> Seven and a half severed heads. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, I guess we'll just stop there. Um, next week's Atomic Blonde, so we'll be talking about the chick from The Mummy and Charlize Theron making out. We have yeah, that to look forward can't to. Can't wait for that. <laughs> uh, yeah.